One Punch Man, Chapter 129, the continuation of Garo vs. Darkshine. Now, we saw at the end of the last chapter, Garo has begun to transform even more. So he's not like full monster yet, but he's somewhere between human and full monster. I think there's like a varying levels of Garo's transformation. I've seen people do YouTube videos on it. And this one, I believe, is the last humanoid looking form he's gonna have before he awakens and becomes the full monster Garo. I'll explain that at the end of the chapter when we get to that point. So let's go ahead and jump in here and talk about this chapter because wow, Yusuke Murata, yet again, just completely shatters our expectations with some of the most mind blowing art you could ever imagine. Face off, the hardest versus the most terrifying. So here we have the standoff between Garo and Darkshine. They're deep down in the Monster Association and you can see that Darkshine is sweating. We saw in the last chapter that like his ego was starting to break. He, like he, the thought crossed his mind that he may actually lose this fight and that kind of just like shattered his entire like mental fortitude um, and Garo even though he took a lot of damage and a lot of punches continues to get up I think his entire rib cage got shattered in the last one and he's still alive it's still kicking so he's showing his resilience here his monster side his like regenerative capabilities he doesn't really seem to feel pain so Garo unleashes just this array of punches and he's just unloading on Darkshine who's saying it's not just his speed but his power is also increasing we've seen that throughout the fight Garo's speed is literally getting faster and faster as he's fighting against Darkshine and Darkshine tries to throw Throw. I believe that looks like the bazooka it might just be a regular punch, but he used that bazooka ability um, in the last chapter. Look at this shot, man. The composition of this shot is so absolutely ridiculous. The directional angle that it, it's making your eyes look for the camera, the way the character is coming out of that pinpoint towards not as, towards the screen, but also towards the character in question. The shading is amazing. The foreshortening, everything about this shot right here is just ridiculous i mean it's, it's some of the best art uh, of manga i've ever seen and it shows here that garo is just moving so fast like dark shine is like basically losing sight of him he throws this punch he thinks it's gonna land and garo is like right up on him instantly another amazing panel here this whole page just screams excellence you can see how garo is basically using this like screw shot this kind of like twister attack with his hands it looks like and he's hitting dark shine so hard that it's sending him flying into a wall which is exploding everything behind it so the force and the magnitude behind garo's attacks is just unbelievable at this point so dark shine gets thrown back i guess he's like flying through all these buildings and rubble or whatever is down there in the monster association lands on his neck and he looks like he's ko'd right here but he's actually not he's struggling he's huffing and puffing and he's like he just he's scared right now like this is like the first time since he's become super alloy dark shine that he's actually scared and here he's saying he, garo used me as a stepping stone to further improve his techniques which is pretty much what he's been doing with all the s rank heroes as he's been going up the ranks fighting stronger and stronger ones he's doing that to kind of prove himself he's he struggled with just about all of them but he's pulled through with just about all of them uh, he lost to a couple of them like watchdog man for example but this was the super alloy dark shine was just the next step for him just an amazing shot here of Garo in his quasi monster form, whatever it is. Both of his eyes are grayed out. The clothing on his body is like sticking to his body and also swirling into the hole that was punctured through his body torso from the monster king orochi he's just got like these kind of like wings of clothes and stuff i mean it's just so awesome i just absolutely love this design such a cool character garo is such a cool character in so many different ways and here we get a lot of the backstory of dark shine i'm not going to go too in depth uh, going over all of these pages but the main concept behind it is you know he was um when he was a child he was a he had a frail body people made fun of him and he trained himself so much that like basically his body became invincible so they're given that little bit of backstory for dark shine but it's not like that <laughs> that in depth you know what i mean it's like some guy trained so hard that his body became invincible but you know i guess he hasn't had a challenge in so long that he got all this self-confidence because he was never losing any battles and he won all the competitions and everything so much so that he was promoted to s class and so again this is the first challenge that he's had and you can see the way that Murata draws speed. I love this, like especially this bottom uh, panel right here. Like look at the way that he's showing Garo like dash around just at lightning speed as Darkshine is just mesmerized and just completely shocked. He just 
doesn't know what to do, doesn't know what to think at this point, as Garo is just increasing his power and speed like every second against this guy. Definitely looks like Garo's attacks are actually starting to hurt him at this point. He's getting very, very frustrated. Ah, oh, you little. And he's just taking tons of damage. He's, just, he's trying to defend himself at this point. And uh, right here, he's saying, this guy, Garo, is strong, really strong. Koitsu, Garo, Sioi. So here Darkshine is saying, I've been looking for an opponent that can push me to 100%. This is it, but why do I have this feeling that I'm not looking forward to fight? But the thought that he might not come out of this unscathed like he always does in all of his fights crossed his mind and it just like scared the crap out of him. So he's got this like very like eggshell kind of ego. Uh, which is breaking right now. The fear he had long since forgotten grew larger and larger. And I love the way that they're showing the fear uh, in like Garo's artwork, right? Like he looks like more evil and monster-like and menacing just from the perception from Darkshine's eyes. And as you see this next just unreal page, of Goro just looking like this giant terrifying monster like look at all this like lightning and the eyes and the teeth and everything about this is crazy from artistic standpoint of view they're showing it like this like he's a giant he's not actually a giant but it's Darkshine's ego basically shrinking down it's the fear that they're showing with this picture it's just an excellent way of telling a story with just a piece of art not only is the art absolutely phenomenal but you got to hand it to Murata for being able to pull off subtle things like this throughout which really gets you to envision things through the character's eyes even as you're a reader of the manga so right here dark shine pretty much he's losing it at this point he's screaming he's throwing wild punches he's missing and garo just nails him with a drop kick he's calling it double ear strikes i mean it looks is he is he trying to cut off his ears right here so this really scares dark shine and i guess they're both kind of remembering getting their ears pulled as a kid uh, but at that point, right as Gar is about to go in, he notices that Darkshine like looks very wimpy. He said, "Like, what is this? What is this wimpy look? It's almost like I'm bullying him." And, and so all this like childhood trauma of being bullied when he was a kid is kind of coming back. And Darkshine's lost. I mean, it's it's pretty clear here. Like he's he's just absolutely shattered at this point. Um, he's scared. He's literally just scared and he's not he's never gonna be able to win if he's scared But you think it's gonna be the end and then something happens to Garo now at first I thought when I saw this panel It was like his monster body like he was starting to like lose control of it or something like that Like it looks like his muscles are bulging and you know We've seen an anime so many times as like characters transform or like a demon bursts out of him or something is something happens to their body and all that stuff but what it actually is is Tatsumaki. And so what we can see here is a psychic barrier forming around Dark Shine. He says, what is this? A barrier? This is Tatsumaki-chan. So what she's doing is I think she's like putting the barrier around all the S rank heroes because remember in the last chapter reviewed she just got freed from the Monster King Psychos fusion and now she's saying she can go all out so she's using her full extent of her psychic powers and I think she's like crushing the entire monster association while putting barriers around all the S rank heroes to keep them alive. He's saying the floor above is collapsing, Garo it's not safe here so he's saying you're gonna get crushed if you stay so Darkshine still like kind of cares for Garo like he still wants him to train and to uh, learn to be a good person and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Um, and he's trying to tell Garo to run. I love this shot right here, man. Just the, the, the angles, the spikiness, this, the sketch work of the pen, everything about this. I just, oh, I love it, man. And then pretty much the last page is just Darkshine saying, eek, what are, did I just say that word? And he curls up into the fetal position inside this barrier as pretty much the whole the whole monster association is crumbling. So what I think Tatsumaki is doing here, based on the webcomic, I think she's like filling the whole monster association with, with junk or she's like lifting it up to the surface. So basically that's the end of the chapter. And I think the next couple chapters are gonna be really, really exciting because it's pretty much gonna get to like the final piece of this arc where everybody's back on the surface again. So no more of this monster uh, association headquarters, like this deep dark dungeon stuff. Everybody's gonna come up to the surface. And that's when like the real war takes place. You got the monster executives, Oh, and also Monster Garo is gonna burst out of here. So what I think is gonna happen is he's basically gonna get crushed inside here as Tatsumaki basically collapses the whole Monster Association. But eventually, I think they're gonna fight the Monster King first. They're gonna have to defeat him and Psychos, the fusion. 
And then after they do that, God Garo or Monster Garo, Awakened Garo, whatever you want to call him, I guess it's more like Awakened Garo, he's going to burst out of the ground and he's going to be his final, near final transformation. The, the one that's going to take on Saitama before he transforms. But you guys got to remember, this is also Yusuke Murata's uh, envisionment, I guess, of one's webcomic. So a lot of stuff may be different. There was no Monster King um, in the original one webcomic. So we're getting to the, the final stages of the arc, but this is like where uh, most of the really good stuff happens so exciting chapter that was fun to read obviously amazing artwork as usual i mean just being an aspiring artist myself seeing someone draw like this makes me want to crawl into a fetal position because like i don't know how this guy can even do art this good yusuke murata is the best in the world hands down my opinion thanks for watching guys and i'll see you on the next video